Okay, take two. You've been working with bar graphs for a couple of days now and you're doing very well. Let's review how to construct a basic bar graph by doing a quick activity. I'm going to draw our graph on the board. We need an x-axis and a y-axis. Which line is the x-axis? That is correct. The x-axis is the horizontal line. The y-axis is the vertical line. The dependent variable goes on the y-axis. The dependent variable is the one that depends on something else. The x-axis is the independent variable. On our graph, the number of students will be the dependent variable and the animal will be the independent variable. Get out your magnets and take turns one at a time. Come and place your magnet above your favorite animal. Now that everyone has had a chance to place your magnet on the board, let's take a look at our data. Remember, data is the word that we use to talk about the information on our graph. First, let's see how many students chose dogs as their favorite animal. Thirteen of you chose dogs as your favorite animal. For cats, seven of you chose cats. Reptiles, five of you. And horses, three of you. You guys know how to make bar graphs and how to get information from the graph. Today we're going to be pulling more information from the graph and we'll start with using this graph. Which animal did the most students choose as their favorite? We can easily just look to see which bar is the tallest. And for dogs, this one's the tallest because it represents 13. So there's the most is dogs. Which animal did the least number of students choose as their favorite? We can just quickly look and see that horses, there were only three because this is the smallest bar. It only represents three, as where the dogs represents 13. So it's a big bar. Why did I choose to count by fives? Since the numbers range from 3 to 13, you can round to 0 and 15, and it's a more accurate representation of our numbers. If we went from 0 to 100, all of this would just be a little tiny on the bottom of your graph, and it wouldn't represent the details that we want to see in our graph. How many students are there in the class by looking at this graph? Well, we can see that there's 13 students represented here, 7 represented here, 5 represented, and 3 represented. So when we add that together, we know that there's 28 students in our class because each student told us which was their favorite animal. Okay, let's move to another example. Birthdays. This bar graph represents all the birthdays in our class. And as you can see, I only scaled our graph to 6 because I wanted a reflection of the numbers to be accurate. So we went from 1 to 6. I'm going to pose a couple of questions about this graph to show you how to find the information. How many more students have birthdays in May than in January. First we need to see how many students have birthdays in well we need to see how many. In May there were five students that had birthdays. And in January there's only one. So if we're trying to figure out how many more, we need to subtract five from one, which gives us four. So we know that there are four more students that have birthdays in May. Are there more students with birthdays in December or in April? Well in April there's only three, and then in December, well, there's only three. So if it's equal, then there's not more or less in one or the other. They're the same. If there were two more students with birthdays in August, how many students would have birthdays in August? Well, let's see. If we're looking for two more, we need to know first how many are in August. In August, only one student has a birthday. So if we add two, two plus one would be three birthdays in August. Which month has the least number of birthdays? We need to look for the smallest bar. June and October both do not have a bar, therefore they have the least amount of birthdays because there's none at all. This time we're going to collect data and construct a bar graph with the data. Let's make a bar graph that represents the colors of our shirts. Our title can be colors of shirts. Okay, this is our data table which you should make before you do a graph. Um, um, four students had purple shirts, seven had blue shirts, four had multicolored shirts, four had red shirts, seven had white shirts, and two had yellow shirts. Okay. What should we count to for this graph? I think we should, well, our lowest is two and our highest is seven. 
This time I think we'll just count by ones and just go to seven. And we can leave that up to see our, our numbers. Okay, let's grab this up here. We've got an x-axis, a y-axis, and our graph is already colored in from take one. Um, we've added the data. We have four students with purple shirts, so I've represented four students with purple shirts, seven students with blue shirts, four students with multicolored shirts, four students with red shirts, seven students with white shirts, and two students with yellow shirts. So we used our data table to get a bar graph. We used our information to build a bar graph. Okay, now I need your help to collect some data and draw a graph. Okay. This is our data table. And seven of you have no siblings. Ten of you have one sibling. Eight of you have two siblings. Two students have three siblings. None of you have four siblings, and one of you have more than four siblings. Okay, now that we've completed our table, what do we do next? We need to put our data into a bar graph. So, let's get a bar graph. our data table up so we can get our information. Um, what should I put along the y-axis? Okay, this is our y-axis and I have the number of students, that's correct. Because that is dependent and it depends on the number of siblings. Okay, so our, I put the number of students over there because it changes depending on how many siblings you have. Our independent variable goes along the x-axis, so in this case, each option for siblings will go along the x-axis. How should we count for our graphs? One, two, threes. Okay, we could count by ones or by twos. What number should we stop at on our y-axis? Our highest number is 10, so we could count by twos and go to 10. Um, okay, we've collected our data, and let's build our graph. No siblings, there are seven, so we will go up seven. One sibling, there are ten students. We go up to ten. For two siblings, there's eight. Three siblings, two students. Four siblings, nine. And more than four siblings, there's one. Okay. Now that we've got our information in our graph, we, let's, um, answer some questions. How many students have no siblings? Okay. No siblings? There are seven. That's correct. How many students have more than two siblings? More than two siblings. Right. Three students. How did you get your answer? Okay. You added each of, each of the ones that have more than two siblings. So would this column count? This column wouldn't count because they have two. We're looking for how many that have more than two. So there's two students here and then one student here. So there's our three students that have more than two siblings. Good job. And how many students have less than four siblings? Twenty-seven. There are two ways to answer this question. Most of you probably counted each of the bars that represented less than four siblings. 
This is the most accurate way of calculating this problem. But if you remember earlier, we calculated how many students we had in class, and we had 28. So if we know that there's 28 students reflected in our graph, we see that there's only one student that has more than four siblings. So we know that there's 27 that have less than four. We just subtract the 28. We go 28 minus 1, and then that gives us the rest which have less than four siblings. Okay. How many more students have just one sibling than students that have three siblings? There are eight more students. Can someone explain to me how to get that answer? Okay. There are ten students that only have one sibling. And there are two students that have three siblings. So we just subtracted two from ten. Right here. And we got eight. So, good job. I think you're ready to do some practice with these problems. Go ahead and find a partner to work with and move your desk or find a place to work on the floor. You'll be getting a Ziploc bag of M&Ms and a worksheet with questions to answer about the data you collect. First, you need to bake, make a bar graph representing your M&Ms and complete the worksheet using your bar graph. Today, you've learned how to put, pull more information from your bar graph. We've used words like more and less, and you've constructed graphs, and you've solved problems using graphs. You learned how to label the axes and how to determine which variable goes on each axis. Are there any questions? Okay, for homework, you should create a bar graph, and you should come up with five questions that your bar graph, about your bar graph, and answer them. Remember to use all the steps, so you will need to include a data table, and make sure your graphs have titles and your axes are labeled correctly. Have a good day.